Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. In the last episode, we spent our first few days in the wintertime searching for power paws, because try as he might, Finch just can't seem to beat those mountain cats when Leo sends out his big groups of reinforcements. So we're actually going to change our strategy now. We're going to try pushing into the southern portions of the territory, as opposed to straight into the mountain domain. I don't think we're quite ready to take over Leo's territory. It seems like we're going to need lots more resources at the very least, and Finch doesn't exactly have too many herbs to his name. So for now, let's uh, say hello to Claudius, and then we'll see if we can set up a battle for tomorrow. Finch, my liege, what do you require of me? Well, let's talk to you first to make sure that you're doing okay today. Work hard, but rest harder. He is honestly just the cutest little cat I have ever seen. We'll have to see if we can decorate his uh, little den area too. We have ideas for Griffin, but I'm not quite sure what Claudius would like around his den, aside from plenty of bunnies, of course. And luckily, we do still have one leftover black hair in our gift pile from Penny. So we'll see if you like these too. I know Scout always liked uh, both types of rabbits. Yeah, seems like Claudius does as well. Claudius probably does remind Finch quite a bit of his father. But let's go ahead and strategize now, and we'll see if we can place our next battle... I suppose right down on the prairie? Maybe that would be a good place for us to try to take over next. Then we could do work for the moles. And you know, I was curious to see if they had anything new in their shop. So since we do have so much food, food is something that Finch isn't too worried about, because of course, it is just like Finch to take tons and tons of food with him on his journey, but not enough herbs to keep himself alive. But that means that we can take that extra food into the mines for a little bit of work. That'll be a pretty decent way for him to train as well. In a way that wouldn't be quite so dangerous as charging into uh, all of these big wars. We might just want to heal ourselves up before we go. The mind of a wandering cat is often like the sun that hides behind the clouds. The true nature may poke out like rays through holes in the canopy of the heavens, but it will never be observed directly. Oh, I wonder if Galen has been trying to speak with Griffin. I can definitely imagine Galen trying to poke his way deep into his thoughts, but Griffin is not too interested in uh, telling his secrets. But yeah, go ahead and treat me fully. We do have a couple of battles to uh, tear through before we even get to the mines, so we want to be fully prepared. And then my new friend, Griffin. We don't have any snake lilies to offer you today, but hopefully we'll be able to find some more soon, especially if we go down into the swamplands. Look, I don't want to hurt your feelings or whatever, but I've got stuff to do. I can't have you hanging around all day. All right, Griffin, I think we can take a hint here. We have work to do too. We're going to see if we can take care of the battle directly above the prairie, and then we'll see you later tonight with lots of gems in tow. Oh, look at all the guards we have out here. Hello, guys. We have Juniper and Simon. These are dark times for all the colonies. Well, that's a bit ominous, Juniper. I mean, I know it's winter time. It is a very, very harsh season, but I think we're going to be able to pull through, so don't you worry. Finch is on the case. I think it's safe to say that he might need a little bit of extra food before he goes into uh, this battle, though. Oh, we have to try to keep our eyes out for those bunnies. Oh, thankfully this one didn't get away. Okay, let's try to snatch this one up. Yeah, that's one of the uh, nice parts of hunting on the highlands, because typically you can just run the prey straight into the cliff sides, and they at least can't jump the gap. But yeah, we'll have him go ahead and munch on one of his mice, I suppose something a little bit more substantial to fill his belly, so he'll be ready to fight the Mystic Colony. Okay, we'll use our deep cut skill first, as always, and then try to get them on the outskirts before they destroy our cats, but unfortunately we were a little bit too late. Thankfully we do have some Mews to pick up, so those will at least uh, help pay for our trips to Galen, and maybe help pay for our allies too. If only we could summon them a little bit more uh, quickly. We might have to consider actually uh, upgrading that skill, so the cooldown time will be a bit less. 
because we definitely need more cards on our side if we want to uh, take care of these battles properly. There's only two more cats though, so I think we might be able to take care of them. It kind of seems like they're starting to get a little bit tired. They're definitely moving slower than they were before, so maybe Finch is actually running them like out of energy because he's been going in circles to separate them. There we go. All right, Finch, that was quite the battle, but you managed to do it. So let's make sure that we get him some extra little morsels of food. Thankfully, we should be able to find a couple more inside the mine stew. I just hope the bats aren't going to hit us quite as hard as these uh, pesky cats. Now, Finch has not tried his hand at mining yet. This was something that his brother absolutely loved to do, though. He learned a lot of his uh, special skills from mining with Penny, though never in the prairie quarry. So this is going to be a special place for a finch alone to catch his mice, of course, and to see if he can find any special treasures here. Yeah, he hasn't actually met any of the moles yet, aside from the one inside his den. What? What? What do you want? Er, uh, wait a minute. You're not a mole. You're a cat. Sorry to burst out at you like that. It's just you woke me from my nap and I get real cranky when folks wake me up. Anyhow, you look pretty confused. Let's get the introductions out of the way. I'm Molu. I run the Prairie Quarry. Nice to meet you, Molu. I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot of you in the future. Got lots of laborers down in the mines below us digging for gems and other pretty looking rocks. We're always looking for more help if you've got some time. Maybe you'd like to get your paws dirty too? I think Finch certainly would. Maybe we could sell some of those treasures off for the muse, or we could even give them to some of our cats. Oh, I wonder if Griffin would like gems. If you bring back some gems, I'll make sure you're rewarded. You'll probably have to dig deep before you start finding the good stuff though. You can mine by swiping with your claws at the big rocks. I pay mole cash in exchange for gems. Yeah, we know all about this. He uh, doesn't take our muse, of course, only this special mole currency. So that's why we need to find all of these special shiny gems for him. I've heard there might be some bats in the lower levels too. Hopefully they won't bother you, but you never know. Yeah, that's another thing that Finch has never experienced in his time. So hopefully the stories from Starling will be enough to prepare him for the journey ahead. Let me know if you have any questions. Remember, I pay mole cash for your gems, so bring them back to me. Yeah, I definitely want to see if he has anything new in his shop. Maybe a new kind of style or something? Let's see, we'll visit the mole cash shop and uh, poke around his wares for just a moment. Oh, the fiery brown color? I don't remember seeing that before. That might actually be new. It's very, very expensive, but it is worth taking note of. I bet uh, some of these different patterns would look very nice on our new cats. Then it looks like we have some accessories, a pet bat too. Oh, that would be so fun to uh, get for Finch in the future. It looks like you can even buy mackerels here now as well, which I don't think was available before. But there's no new styles for us to purchase. So that's something that we don't have to set our sights on. We'll just uh, try our best to get as deep down in the mines as we possibly can and uh, cross our fingers that those bats aren't going to be too much of a nuisance. Let's see how hard they hit. If they're particularly nasty, then we'll want to make sure we stay away from them. I don't think that guy hit us at all. Oh, that was strange. I guess that bat was out of practice too. Alright, maybe this won't be so bad. We just have to find the staircase so we can get to the next level. And of course, we have to crack through all of these rocks until it pops out of one of them. Oh my gosh, is it going to be in like the last rock that we chuck? We only have two more left on this level. Really? Is this going to be the staircase? Oh my gosh, Finch. That was not a lucky day for you. But we are definitely going to have to make sure that you eat up some extra food. Maybe one of these frogs, because you love them so very much. So that'll give you the confidence that you need to find that staircase faster. It does give us experience points for finding the staircases as well. So in a roundabout way, this is all helping us train more too. Most of you seem to agree that we should probably focus on fighting over foraging. 
especially in the winter time when we won't be able to pick up any new herbs. But let's see if this bat, there we go, that one is actually hitting us, though he's so scared. Oh, Finch must be like intimidating these bats, I guess. Maybe it has something to do with his mighty lion's roar. He's used it so many times in previous battles that his growls have become particularly menacing. But if we do manage to find some gemstones down here, I am quite curious to see which of our cats are going to love them the most. I'd imagine Galen would probably enjoy having some special decorations by his den. But we know that Griffin likes, I guess, shiny things. Or maybe he just likes potions. If you guys remember during the uh, last festival, he said that the glow potions were pretty cool. I kind of wish that I had picked up one of those just to bring home, because I bet he would have been very, very impressed. We'll have to remember that for next time. But if he likes glow potions, my thought is that he might also enjoy things like fireflies, and other uh, sparkly little mementos of the forest. For that matter, I'm starting to wonder if his past might be connected to the Mystic Colony. He does love the snake lilies, and he wanted to go somewhere very, very far away from his old home. So it might be a long shot, but I wonder if he used to live inside those very same swamplands. And I wonder what caused him to want to move too. I wish we could learn a little bit more about Griffin, but I'm sure it'll come in due time. He just doesn't trust us quite enough yet. I kind of wonder if Claudius might have some relation to Arthur too. I mean, there are some pretty big similarities between those two cats. Not the least of which is the uh, sword that is sitting right outside his den. And I mean, I know he's a guard, but it can't be too easy for a cat to get their paws on a giant sword. So it does make me wonder if perhaps they knew each other. Maybe Claudius was yet another one of the cats who used to work for Leo, but decided to uh, change his ways when he saw how brutal the cat can actually be. I mean, you guys know it too. Claudius is just a big, sweet goofball with the regal mask of a royal guard. So it would not surprise me in the slightest if uh, Leo was just a little bit too much for him, maybe. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any ideas for the backstories of our cats, because I would love to hear them. I know one of you suggested that maybe we should call Galen, like, Elder Galen. Maybe he's a bit of an older cat, with a great deal of experience to share. Finch always assumed that Galen was probably connected to the Forest Guardian in some way. I mean, that blue fur has to be a sign of some sort. Though I suppose he could also be related to some of the other blue cats of the forest. For some reason, blue seems to be a very common yet mystical color when it comes to the different colonies. We have Lyris, the very, very poetic soul who lived with Finch in the forest colony. Then we have Alyssa, who runs the Mystic Colony, and now Galen of the Highlands. If the Forest Guardian were to take on the form of a cat, though, someone who could infiltrate the colonies, perhaps, to make sure that we're holding up our end of the bargain and keeping the balance of the forest strong, I would imagine that they would take the form of Galen. There's just something about the way that he talks, and he's quite a bit of a balance keeper himself protecting the balance of the minds and the hearts of our different cats in the colony. But oh my goodness, Finch, you are really burning through a lot of food down here. Hopefully we'll find some mice popping out of these rocks soon, though we're only on level 13, so I think we're actually going to have to bring quite a bit more food with us if we want to get deeper into the mines. I think we're going to have to consider picking up these rock debris too, Oh, and it looked like we actually had some iron ore to pick up as well. Okay, those are actually worth a little bit more than the regular rock debris is. So at least we'll have something more valuable to sell off to the moles. Not the super special gemstones that they're looking for, but at least it's something. We're down to our very last little bunny though. So I think Finch is just about done with his first mining trip. Not the most successful of things in terms of items, but I do believe he is trained enough 
to finally upgrade his fighting skill. So in the long run, this was definitely worth it. Now he should be able to hit the bats a little bit harder, as well as uh, all of those enemy cats that are sure to be swarming him as soon as he resurfaces. Maybe once we do start finding gemstones and have enough to bring back to our den and spread around the territory as decorations, I wonder if that might be enough to summon a certain cat from his past. I bet Starling would be very, very interested to see what he's been getting up to. Maybe he'd even have some pointers for Finch to help him out down here, since he was a little bit more experienced in a mining. And I would imagine that that's probably how he's getting most of his muse these days. He's probably some uh, traveling artist looking for new materials to use. And that's just the sort of thing that the moles would love to take advantage of. But I think it might be time for us to return home. Maybe we'll see if we can just find one last staircase for the extra experience point. It's not much, but we might as well take it. And then we'll head straight back up to the surface again. And uh, hopefully refill our pockets with some extra food. Yeah, we didn't find too much for you down here, Molu. But at least we have uh, a couple of little rock debris to offer you. You know, he'll give us 28 mole cash for all of the stuff in our pockets. So we have a grand total of 33 so far. Definitely not as much as Finch was hoping to gather for his first mining trip. But at least all of those tougher rocks helped him strengthen up a little bit. So let's munch on that little mouse that we just caught. And then head back out into the world. It looks like it's not quite time for us to return to our den yet. So despite all of that hard work that he just did, there's always more to take care of. In fact, let's head back up toward the highlands again to see if we can find any more bunnies. That way we'll have an extra gift to uh, offer up to Claudius once we wake up again in the morning. Well, the mountains are really bare tonight. It looks like we can only find a couple of mice skittering around the edges. Oh, don't go off the screen. Oh no, poor Finch. He's so tired that he can barely keep his eyes open. So I guess it might actually be time for him to return to his den after all. He does have some delicious frogs in there to spare. So we'll have to uh, have a munch on those to get his energy back. And then uh, tomorrow, it's going to be time for us to go down to the battle that we placed right on the prairie quarry. What a uh, better time to claim that place for ourselves than after doing so much work for the moles. Yeah, I think that's the area that Finch is going to want to control next. That'll give him a big advantage over the mountain domain. I don't believe they actually have any quarries under their control. Oh, and it's snowing today too. Oh, everything looks so beautiful in the highlands in the winter time. I absolutely adore this. Oh, and look at that. It seems like the other cats are also getting wise to our ways and they wanted to place some battles down here as well, right along our borders. But I think we'll do okay. We have new confidence and we have new strength. We're stronger than ever before, and the mines has given Finch his confidence. But yeah, the forest still has the Canyon Creek under their control, so that means that uh, Leo doesn't have any special little gemstones to take back to the moles and to use for his resources. Work hard, but rest harder. Oh, Claudius is always looking out for us, isn't he? He doesn't want us to run ourselves straight into the ground. He must have heard about all of the work that we've been doing. And Galen, I think once again, we will probably ask you to heal us before we head out for the day. Travel is good for the soul. Visiting faraway places with the different sights and cultures expands the mind. That is why I'm happy to call this colony my home. I am finding that it has enriched my life greatly. Oh, excellent, Galen. I'm glad you think so. That may have been a, a sneaky little hint that we should visit the other colonies more too. Just to uh, talk to their cats, get to know them a bit better, and maybe strike some alliances. But yeah, go ahead and treat me fully again, Galen. I guess we'll have to do some more hunting just to sell off the prey for the extra muse. 
because I think that's going to end up being the best way for us to stay alive in the winter. And since we're heading into the southern portions of the map today, we are going to see if we can find you some more snake lilies. Oh, we have our third star with Griffin without even giving him a gift. Look, I don't want to hurt your feelings or whatever, but I've got stuff to do. Oh, you told us this yesterday, Griffin, trying to brush us off, but we can see that we're cracking past your shell. Slowly but surely, pretty soon we'll be on uh, the best of terms with Griffin too. Oh, there's a bunny right on top of the ice. Oh, that's going to be tricky to pounce on, but straight into the trees, we are definitely going to be able to hunt you down. Oh no, and it looks like Rosie may have scared this bunny, but yet again, you scared it straight into the cliffside, so thank you very much. I've been told that I need to practice my tracking skills. I followed some paw prints all the way here. Were they yours? They were probably actually the bunnies, Rosie. Oh my gosh, and there's a frog up here? Oh, Finch, you have to catch the frog, your very favorite meal. It looks like Boots might be trying to uh, help little Rosie with her tracking. I'll do whatever it takes to keep our borders safe and secure. Oh, maybe he's actually just watching her back then? Or watching ours, because goodness knows that we could use the extra help right now. I think that battle is directly below us. Not the one that we placed, but uh, one on our borders nonetheless. So we have our skills at the ready. Let's see if we can chase the mystic colony away and get down to the quarry. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Excellent, you guys. Tons and tons of muse to pick up. So we had plenty of backup on this tile, but I'm not sure if we're going to have quite as much inside mystic territory. Oh yeah, there's a lot of mystic cats in there. Let's call some more allies and use our lion's roar to scare them away. That way we should be able to trap them on the cliff sides. Oh, that was excellent. That was absolutely perfect. Good job, you guys. That definitely wouldn't have worked without all of your help. So that means that we actually finished all of our battles for the day, and we still have so much health points to spare. Oh, excellent. We're about halfway to uh, taking over this tile entirely too. So yeah, I think Finch is definitely feeling confident enough to spend a little bit more time down in the swamplands, searching for the special snake lilies to bring back to all of his friends and the blueberries for Galen, too. I wonder if any of the other cats would enjoy eating frogs and toads with Finch. I mean, it seems like it's a very acquired taste. Not what you would expect most cats to call their favorite food. But I bet there would be no better way to get to know Finch than by sharing a little froggy meal with him. So maybe we'll have to consider just giving all the cats some frogs at some point, just to see how they would react. If Griffin truly is from the Swamplands, then maybe he would enjoy them too. Seems like there's no better place for us to catch frogs and toads than inside the Mystic Colony's territory. Between frogs and toads, and the crows as well, any cat who has lived in the swamps must know these food sources better than most. And it looks like our first guard is finally making their rounds. Oh, a couple of them, a little group of twins. And a third one too, okay. So we'll have to try to take these guys out one by one like usual. We'll just go ahead and munch on one of our berries first since we are getting a bit hungry. And I suppose we could always use our snake lilies too. I want to save them as gifts but I'm sure Griffin would understand if it meant keeping ourselves alive. Despite how standoffish he is, despite how icy he appears toward us, I'm sure he doesn't wish for Finch to fall in battle. Honestly, if he didn't like Finch just a little bit, then he might as well have just become some wandering rogue rather than joining our colony. But we have really, oh my gosh, Hit the jackpot with the uh, snake lilies today. Okay, here I thought that we had finished our battle, but the mystic colony is definitely onto us now. Oh, there's Furball again. Oh, you must have called all the cats toward us, didn't you? I thought maybe they snuck off the screen because I only took out two of their cats, but clearly I was mistaken. Well, we came down here for snake lilies and that is definitely what we found, so I would call that a win in my book. 
We might as well just warp directly back home. So, oh my gosh, we'll be able to catch all of our cats before they go to bed. Jeez, they are really coming after us now. I guess it's just because we stole so many of their poisonous plants. That's going to leave much less for them to work with, and I'm sure they are very, very aware of that. But Griffin, you will be so happy to know that we found you some more of those poisonous plants that you love. We even have a little extra one to set up right outside his den. Yeah, once we have enough of these, I definitely want to set up a little area out here full of snake lilies and crows, all sorts of items that would otherwise act as a deterrent for the faint of heart. Cats probably wouldn't want to get too close if they know they run the risk of getting poisoned. Oh, and Claudius, he already went to sleep. It's not even nine o'clock and he's already locked away inside his castle. Of course. Well, Galen, I think I may have accidentally eaten the last of the berries. Again, just like Finch to stuff his face with the sweet berries when he meant to bring them home for Galen. But at least we have an extra one inside our den that we can spare him instead, so he doesn't feel left out, of course. We'll go ahead and pop this uh, right into your pockets. You know, I just realized that those darker splotches on his fur could actually be stains of berry juice. So maybe that's why he loves the berries so much. Either he uses them as some type of fur dye, or he eats so many of them, just like Finch, that he ends up making his fur a complete mess. But we'll leave these gifts right outside for you, Claudius, so we can give those to you for breakfast in the morning. And I just remembered that we never actually checked out what the uh, castle style looks like as the leader's den. So just for the sake of us uh, seeing all the different styles, I do want to go back into the build menu. I think we will probably end up just keeping this plain style for now. I think it fits pretty well with the highlands. Yeah, let's just uh, see how it looks. Oh, that is actually super, super cute. I love the little flag on top. It definitely looks quite grand next to Claudius's den as well. They do make a pretty good pair. But we'll go back to our plain style. Pop those trees down right where they were before. I think they might be a little bit farther away from uh, the lake, but that's okay because I have noticed that Finch tends to stumble straight into the water as soon as he wakes up in the morning. And that's going to become a little bit problematic when it thaws out again, especially since he's not such a great swimmer. But in the next episode, I think it's actually going to be Finch's birthday. Finch was born on the 6th of winter, so we'll have to go visit the family again at the Forest Colony, see if we can find some little gifts to purchase for Finch. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!